what does it mean if you test positive for Epstein-Barr? This is a question I get asked a lot when I'm reviewing lab results with patients. They see that positive there and they wanna know what that means for them. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at all the different uh, meanings behind positive Epstein Barr tests, specifically things like viral capsid, nuclear antigen, early antigen D, et cetera, the IgGs, the IgMs, all those things to help you better understand if you currently have a problem you need to deal with or if it's simply something from the past. So, if this interests you, keep watching. And if you like this type of information about health and other topics like Epstein Barr and other health related things, subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to like the like this video to get more videos like it. Okay, so this is one of those uh, tests that I was referring to, and this is called the Epstein Barr virus panel. Um, and these are your reference ranges here. So uh, this is what someone who didn't have Epstein Barr would look like. Um, and here's another example of the same thing here. So and so it kind of looks like tells you what. Uh, it would be if it was positive and in this case the person is positive for all of these antibodies and there's three different antibodies that we're really looking at two IgG and one IgM so viral capsid uh, IgG viral capsid IgM and then nuclear antigen so anytime some so if you're you know you're wondering how to interpret uh, or what it means when you have a positive Epstein-Barr virus depends which one of these is positive so if you have a positive IgM that means you've had a recent exposure pattern suggestive of recent Epstein-Barr infection um, it could mean that you you know are still fighting it off months later after the exposure but typically when you have IgM it's from a recent exposure. Now, sometimes when people have been infected uh, many, many years ago, you'll typically will, will expect to see this negative, but if it's being reactivated, sometimes this one can be positive again. But typically it's gonna stay negative even if it becomes reactivated, the IgMs will. However, the this IgG can be indicative of a reactivation of an Epstein-Barr virus. Um, so if you have a test that, uh, an EBV test that shows positive for viral caps at IgG could go either way. It could mean that it's just a past infection and it's dormant, or it could mean that it's a current reactivation of a previous dormant Epstein-Barr virus. And then, and then we'll talk a little bit about how to, you know, decipher that one. But I wanted to talk about the nuclear antigen first. Um, Anytime this one is positive, it pretty much means that there was a past infection. The viral capsid uh, can go away after the initial infection, whereas the nuclear antigen almost always is gonna be positive once you've been exposed to it. Um, so basically that's the story there. Now back to you know what you do about the viral capsid when it's positive. Um, so let's say both of these were negative or you know this one was negative and she just had uh, or he just had uh, positive for both of these that would be suggest that could could go either way either past infection or a, a current reactivation and so that would mean you'd want to do some more deeper testing and we're going to look at another test that is is one of the ones that i would recommend doing to evaluate that and another thing is you can also do the uh, pcr viral uh, load or you know kind of quantify how much virus is present by doing a PCR Epstein-Barr virus test as indicated here. So let's look at that other test now. Okay, so this is another test we can use to help us differentiate when someone has a reactivation of the Epstein-Barr virus. So we typically wouldn't look at this one to see if someone has a, a recent exposure, like an acute infection. It would be more to look to see if they have a a reoccurrence or a reemergence of a previous infection, or we call this uh, reactivated or or latent uh, Epstein Barr, and this can be helpful because when this is high, it does suggest that someone has you know a reactivation of it, and that is because typically when someone has fought off the Epstein Barr virus, it's no longer present in their system, and we would see uh, basically a negative here or sometimes equivocal too, but. Um, when it's positive, it does make us think, so it's about, you know, 15% or maybe 20% of the people that have exposure will still have lingering amounts of this uh, early antigen D, but typically when it's high, you know, most of the uh, most of the time it's because reemergence, because 80 
or so percent of the people will be negative after they've been exposed. So when you have a positive Epstein-Barr early antigen D, IgG, um, and it's well above the uh, positive range, like this one just slightly above, um, you know, I'd say like 25 and higher, it's going to make you more suspicious that there's a re-emergence. Uh, so that's how I would interpret a positive Epstein-Barr test in this case. And if you uh, look back at the previous one, the viral capsid, if that one's positive as well, you know, that would give you more uh, suspicion that this person may have that uh, reactivation, especially if, you know, the uh, IgM is negative, then, you know, you know that you don't have a recent exposure and it's uh, kind of more of a reactivation of the Epstein-Barr virus. And then like the previous test too, you can just uh, follow this up with a uh, PCR test to kind of quantify the amount of virus that's there, especially if it keeps going up and up. But you always want to correlate it back to what the person's symptoms are. So if they're not really having symptoms, you know, you may not be as suspicious of this unless, you know, it continues to be high for years or, you know, or it goes up or the person starts having symptoms or uh, you do the PCR test and it's positive. But the person doesn't have symptoms, you know, I probably wouldn't look at it in a whole, whole lot more detail in you know, usually you're going to screen for something like this when they are having symptoms. So it's kind of some things to think about when you have a positive uh, Epstein-Barr test, what, what the test might mean. Uh, different positives and different negatives have different meaning. So that should give you a little better understanding of how to look at that. So that does it on this topic. What does it mean when you test positive for Epstein-Barr? When you see this in your test results, now you'll know what to do and how to think about those results. Now, if you have a, a follow-up question on any of the content of this video, please ask it in the comment section. And if you have a maybe unrelated topic or a similar related topic, I'm always looking for new ideas, new things that people are interested in, and maybe drop that in the comment section as well. I'd be happy to take a look and answer your questions. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you next time.